Hello and welcome to another episode of Digital Marketing Made Simple. I'm your host, Jenny Lyon. So how many social media channels do you have for your business? Many small business owners think that they have to have every single social media platform and they spend dozens of hours crafting platform specific posts, commenting, and trying to engage with their audience. And while I applaud their commitment and effort, I'm really here to tell you that it's probably not the best use of your time. So as a small business owner, we all know our time is really limited. You know, you can only do so much and social media can really become one of the biggest time sucks. (laughs) I mean, if you're planning on getting the most out of your social media, you really should be spending your time on the platforms where your target audience is actually hanging out. So the first step of redefining your social media marketing strategy is to do an audit. So I thought I would talk a little bit more about that this week because I really think when it comes to social media, it can be very overwhelming, right? You think, oh my gosh, Instagram, Pinterest, LinkedIn. Oh my, oh my gosh, you know, how do I really choose the best platforms for my business? Well, the process involves really going through your entire social media presence to determine what's working, what isn't working, and how to fix it, right? So it can be a bit of an involved process, you know, especially if you're not an expert in social media, (laughs) but it's definitely worth it to start getting the most out of your social media efforts. So with an audit, you really get a clearer picture of your social media efforts. You know, are your posts resonating with your audience? How many new followers have you gotten over the past few months? Are you growing or has your online presence kind of stagnated, right? In your audit, in your audit, you want to pick up on, you know, all of the relevant information from your accounts. So everything from your follower count and posts, likes, comments, groups, brand consistency, all of it. And then after, you know, you've evaluated your social media channels and their performance, you can start to take the steps necessary to choose which of these platforms are best for your business and where to focus your time and energy. So it really starts with defining your target audience. You know, some small business owners really try to cast the biggest net possible. I hear this over and over again, that they really want to connect with everyone, right? And they want to pull in as many customers as they possibly can. And they think that by casting a really wide net, that that will happen. And while that might be a feasible strategy if you have an unlimited budget, unlimited time, and you don't care about ROI. But I think most small businesses were working on it with a little bit tighter budget. And so that's why you really have to define your target audience immediately. You know, if you have an idea of who your ICA, your ideal customer avatar for your business is, and you absolutely should, (laughs) then that's a really great place to start. You know, who is your perfect customer? Um, What do they want? Where do they live? What demographics do they belong to? All of this information can really help to define your products and your services, but it will also help you to retarget your social media aims to really focus on those folks who are going to be most receptive to your messaging. So you wanna start by creating content. Once you have your ICA nailed down, then it's time to start creating some really relevant and valuable content that you can share on your social media channels. But if you're still struggling with your ICA, then you really need to go back to that step as it's going to be so important to know exactly who your ideal customer is before you even think about creating any type of content and messaging behind it. So I do have a free workbook that will walk you through creating your ICA and you can grab it in the show notes or over at jennylioncom forward slash ICA, but it will definitely help you get started. Anyhow, I'm a huge believer in weekly content for your website, right? It doesn't have to be a blog. It could be, it could be a podcast. It could be a YouTube video, but it could be a blog as well. But one piece of content, not only does it give you a consistent stream of new content that you can share on social media, 
but it also helps to keep your website active. It can boost your SEO, you know, boost you in search results, and it definitely is part of a healthy SEO strategy. That's for another time, but just so you know. <laughs> so blogs, podcasts, YouTube videos, you know, there's all kinds of content, but these aren't the only types of content that you could share on social media. So maybe you have a webinar, right? Webinars can be a fantastic piece of content that really can deliver a tremendous ROI. And you can promote it on social media for weeks ahead of time. Or if you have an evergreen webinar, you could post about it forever. <laughs> and it really can build up a lot of excitement, you know, in your posting. And then, you know, even after that webinar is over, you know, if you don't make it evergreen, you can still share that content, you know, maybe it, you can create an opt-in with it, or at least get it out to, you know, your audience to make sure that, you know, if they missed it, they can still grab it. And then speaking of opt-ins, um, lead magnets, you know, they're also an excellent piece, you know, to promote in social media is opt-ins, right? Your lead magnets. So, your lead magnets really are that same level of quality as your paid products or services. They definitely should be, right? The whole idea behind having a really amazing lead magnet is you want someone to have to sign up for it. They just can't possibly not. <laughs> and then once they do and they receive it, you want them to be like, oh my gosh, this is amazing. And if she's giving this away for free, then working with her and paying her is probably going to produce some really amazing results, right? And that's really what you want them to feel. And then you can promote that on social media, which again can increase engagement and really help you build up your email list, right? That's the whole point behind that. You also want to make sure that you're really focusing on a few key channels, right? So let's look at some of the big social media channels. So I tend to think Facebook, you know, Instagram, Pinterest, you know, there's, there's a lot of them, but it kind of depends on your business, but you know, the social media platforms that people use to search for things, right? So it's probably Pinterest, Instagram, Facebook, that type of thing, but your audience may also be on, you know, Twitter or LinkedIn, TikTok, you know? So I think it's a great idea to make sure that you are posting where your audience is hanging out. For example, LinkedIn, it's a fantastic platform for professionals, right? So if you're a small business that is really, you know, based around yourself, right? And you would want to make sure that you have a really fleshed out personal LinkedIn account, which can be a great way to communicate your expertise, right? And give some credibility, you know, in your field. And you can also post your content on LinkedIn, right? So it can be part of an effective strategy to get your blog posts and other pieces of content out to that ideal client. LinkedIn's reach is a little bit different than some of the other social media channels. And you definitely want to make sure that, you know, you're only using it if that's where your ideal client is hanging out, but it can definitely be a really great option. Video has become such a huge component of social media these days. I mean, my goodness, I've seen like, you know, Instagram stories is just like blowing up. And now Pinterest is offering stories. And of course, Facebook is. And if you've been doing any type of short form video, you know, for example, on Instagram, then you might want to consider, you know, extending that content and creating some content for YouTube, right? And then you can start to build a following there and, you know, possibly even monetize that channel. However, again, the strategy does require a lot of work and it definitely isn't where you want to be focusing your energies if your ideal client doesn't hang out there. So going back to Pinterest. So Pinterest is super interesting. You know, I think a lot of people don't even really consider it a social media network, but it is a fantastic place to find new content. You know, it's really classified more as a search engine. You know, you can pop on and type in whatever you're looking for and voila, you have a ton of visual, you know, pieces of content to choose from. And, you know, people on Pinterest are always looking for new things, right? So you definitely, you know, if your target audience is hanging out on Pinterest, then it would be a fantastic option for getting your content out there. Personally, I think MySpace is a really highly underrated social media platform. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's not 2007. Skip it. <laughs> 
So anyhow, sorry about that. But um, once you've completed your audit and you've created new content and you've refocused on a few of those key channels, now what, right? Now what? Well, it's time to measure your results. So unfortunately, this is a step that you really can't rush through. You really need your new strategy to play out. You need to give it some time to really gather the valuable data that you need. You can, of course, you know, tweak your strategy as you go, which I definitely recommend doing, but you should try to stay on course, you know, for some time so that you do actually have really valuable data to dig through. And it takes time to measure those results because Social media really is all about a long game. You know, as I said last week, you know, unless you release a piece of content that goes viral, you know, you probably won't get a sudden rush of followers or subscribers really pounding on your door. Your growth of social media, it's likely to be a slow but steady process. And in my own experience, you know, it really does take time to build up your following. You know, last year, I really started to put a concentrated effort into Instagram, which believe me, it's taking up a ton of my time <laughs> and it felt really slow going at first, but I have been seeing absolutely incredible growth, you know, and it's been growing and growing and growing every month. And it really reminded me how important it is to measure your results, right? And that way you won't become discouraged, right? If something's not working, you tweak it and you change it. And trust me, if you put the right strategy into action, you will see results. And of course, that doesn't mean that things can't be improved, right? There's always room for improvement, right? There's really no such thing as a perfect social media strategy. I mean, world events, platform changes, upgrades. There's so many factors that can really turn your best laid plans, blah, right? And you probably will have to do some tweaking. So for example, like I said, Pinterest recently announced that they're creating story pins, right? And these pins act very much like Instagram stories. And if you want to get the most out of Pinterest, you'll need to start adjusting your strategy to incorporate that new feature. So let's kind of recap what we talked about today. So as a small business owner, as we all know, I've been in business for 20 years as a small business we have limited time and limited money, right? So we really want to focus in where we can make the biggest difference. And a social media audit, it's a really great way to start to see what your current strengths are and what your current weaknesses are on the platforms that you're on. And then when you figure out where you want to put those resources, you really need to make sure that you know who you're talking to, who is your ideal client avatar. And then when creating new content, that really is the key part of social media. You know, you want to make sure that you're creating new, valuable, relevant content for your followers to consume. That content could be anything like blog posts or podcasts or YouTube videos. It could even be lead magnets. You know, there's so many different pieces that you could be offering. And what I always tell my clients is, is just focus on creating one piece of content a week, then use that content to create other pieces of content. So if you write a weekly blog, fantastic. Take that blog and turn it into a newsletter. Take that blog and turn it into social media content. Pull it apart as much as you possibly can to get your biggest bang out of it. And really, everyone should probably at least choose two or three platforms that they want to be on. But again, they need to be the platforms where your audience is hanging out. You can't just pull out of the air. OK, I'm going to be on Instagram, Facebook and Twitter. You know, it doesn't work that way. Unfortunately, you really have to find out exactly where your audience is hanging out and then double down your efforts in those platforms. And to grow your presence, you really do need to constantly be tweaking your strategy, right? I do that every month. I tell you guys that all the time. At the end of the month, I sit down, I spend some time, usually on the weekend, and I go through all of my stats, insights, analytics for the whole month. And I see what's working, what's not working, what type of content is resonating, which platforms are giving me the biggest return. And I tweak my strategy and I create new content. Either way, don't expect instant growth, right? Social media is a long game. So, you know, get in it, have fun. It's supposed to be fun too, but you know, it is a long game. And of course, make sure that you're always evaluating, tweaking, you know, your strategy as new features 
become available. And no matter what social media platforms you're on, it can really pay to simplify things. So some fantastic ways are to create templates, right, that you can use over and over again, or automation, automate your post, schedule things. And one way that I help my clients with their social media is by creating graphic design templates, right? If they have certain looks for their grid on Instagram or a certain look for their pins on Pinterest, we can create very beautiful templates that you can just pop in new text, new image, you're good to go. And they're branded. So it's pretty amazing. And then um, if you want to check out some ideas, I do have some free um, social media graphics that you could grab. So you can, I'll put those in the show notes, but you can grab them at jennylion.com forward slash the number 15. And I also do have a hashtag um, yearly calendar. So that's kind of like a cheat sheet of tons of different um, hashtag holidays, you know, hashtags that you can use for holidays, special occasions. Um, it's really fun. You can grab that at jennylion.com forward slash hashtag. And of course, if you'd rather get your social media off your to-do list, I completely understand. We do it for several clients. Definitely schedule a free consultation at jennylion.com forward slash chat. And we can help you go through this entire process, everything from really finding out who your ideal client is, to what your messaging should be, to what social media channels should you be on. And let's audit your social media to really optimize it the best that we can. And then start creating some really great content that is going to bring in a whole bunch of new followers that are going to convert into paying customers. And if you have any questions at all about social media or really any other area of digital marketing, please reach out. I am always happy to answer any questions you guys have. I am here and I will see you next time on another episode of Digital Marketing Made Simple.